Hello, it's I, Skylo, and today we're going to talk about WWDC 2019. It was a very interesting event today where quite a bit of things were released, and let's talk about those now. So, first, they showed their intro video uh, showing off some of the icons and the invites, and then a video showing off developers. Then they talked about how well their services are going and got right in to giving us some interesting stuff. We got a sneak peek of a show called For All Mankind that will be on Apple TV+. Plus. Looks like it could be a good show based on that sneak peek trailer. Um, it's by the people who do, did Star Trek, I believe. So, promising. We'll see how that goes. And then, right in, a few minutes in, we're going straight into talking about TVOS. TVOS has a new home screen, which is more user-oriented because there is multi-user support. Which is a step in the right direction for iOS and something else, which we'll talk about later. Because I would love iOS to get multi-user support as well. It uses this control center to switch user. It also has Apple Music on it, with the Shazam-like feature of syncing lyrics, which they probably took from Shazam because they own Shazam. Uh, new underwater screensavers in tvOS 13. So basically, new tvOS has users, and more personalization is the big improvement. Which is a little bit of a trend we'll see in here, but not necessarily in the places where we really want to see that trend. Next, we have WatchOS 6. This is a it was very fast start for WWDC. We've already been through tvOS and the beginning, and it was only 10 minutes in. And it continued to be really quick. Taking notes for this was very hard. So, new watch faces was quite a big thing here. So, here are the five new watch faces that are the ones they showed. The gradient face is the one on the far left. It's got just a nice gradient. You can change the color and stuff. The numeral face, which shows numerals for the time in different languages. The digital face, which I think is like an extra large digital face, which is very similar to one we already have. California dial, which has Roman numerals and looks like a very high quality face. And then the sundial face over there on the right. Some very interesting watch faces, which I'll be happy to look at when I get that watchOS update. Haptic chives is haptic feedback or a sound on the hour. Very interesting thing to look at there. And there are now more apps on the watch. These are just as we predicted. When they were announcing them, as they said it, I said it. It was just exactly what we thought. Audiobooks, voice memos, and calculator. Which the calculator also is the interesting feature of doing easy tip calculations and splitting bills with friends. So, pretty cool there. And it's possible now for app developers to create apps that are only for the Apple Watch. Which is actually really cool because I have a folder on my iPhone which is for just watch apps. Because I don't use the actual apps, I just use the watch app. But now they can create apps just for the watch. And to find those apps, you need an app store on your Apple Watch. So there's now an app store on the Apple Watch. Again, exactly as we predicted used to download apps on the Apple Watch. There are new health and fitness capabilities. The uh, noise tracking health, which we totally heard about before, which shows uh, how loud, keeps track of that, keeps you safe in noise ways. We also have menstrual cycle tracking on the watch and the iPhone, but there is no pill tracking, which we were hoping for. And also a beautiful redesigned health app. This health app looks very good. It's got a lot of useful information that I will love to check out. There's a demo of features they showed, which is, I mean, they always, they demo everything. It basically just shows us that it all works. But there were some more features they talked about in the demo. Recognizing songs with Shazam, being able to update the OS on the watch, new Pride Edition watch bands, and available for all watches except for the Series Zero. The weird part there is they actually didn't mention that in the keynote. I had to go search for that on Apple's website. But same support as watchOS 5 with watchOS 6. Now there are probably more features than that which we'll find throughout the beta and stuff, but yeah, we'll have to get into that later. 
Now, iOS. iOS 13 has been heavily anticipated. And just so you're wondering, I'll tell you right now, it supports iPhone 6s and later. We'll talk more about that later, though. So first, he's got to tell us about how great iOS is and uh, laugh at Android for their low install base. But then, he talks about performance, that it's going to get great performance. He says that there will be smaller app sizes and downloads, which sounds awesome, and that there will be a two times faster app launch. That will be awesome if we actually get that, to get better performance again. I would absolutely love to see that. And then, they show this awesome video, and right as they started showing it, I was yelling it. I knew what it would be. On iOS 13, dark mode. And, oh, it's so awesome. It looks so good. I'm so excited for that dark mode. It's got a lot of cool stuff with it that they showed off. So here it is in a bunch of different apps right here. You can look at those. And they showed off quite a bit of different things here in their demo. Many different apps of it. They even showed off swipe typing, something that was predicted and something very cool to have actually, which I'm very excited about. And a new share sheet with new sharing suggestions and lots of cool stuff there. I'm excited for that. And lyrics, uh, so with Shazam again, shows lyrics. And PS4 and Xbox One S controllers are supported. I know they said this, I'm not sure where, so I'm just throwing it in here. There are some more features in a bunch of different apps. Safari has per website preferences. Mail has some small updates with like Siri and stuff. Notes have gallery view and shared folders. And Reminders has a new design, which looks really cool. It's got a lot of special reminding features to do good stuff there. And it appears like we're getting a fantastic update with Maps. So Maps has these much more detailed maps that they're going to be spreading to all over the US by the end of 2019. It actually looks really nice and I really like the idea there. And they have place collections like Google Maps, uh, a very high quality street view which you can see here that has got some very incredible features with it. They're getting very close to Google Maps and I'm very excited to see that. So we also have more options for, this is a big one right here, sharing your location with apps. So you can do things like allow once, change what preferences they have. It's very good with that. And as they were talking about privacy, they brought up one of my favorite things they brought up that day. Oh wait, this one makes me so excited. One that you don't even need an iPhone for. Sign in with Apple. So you see those sign in with Google, Facebook, all those things. Apple has now released their API for that. So there are many websites will have a sign in with Apple button, which allows you to sign in securely to websites. And this is awesome. When you sign up, it'll let you choose what stuff you want to share with them. So some websites may want to know your name or your email, and Apple will ask you what you want to share with them. And if you don't want to share your email per se, there is a hide your email thing. So it will give them a fake email instead of your real email that will forward your email, real email. And each individual website will have its own fake email so you could delete an email and stop receiving stuff from that website whenever you want to. This is a really convenient and really innovative thing to see from Apple. Now HomeKit. HomeKit has security cameras. Again, we keep hearing about these things we heard before, but there will be security camera support which is really cool to see. It'll analyze the footage on your Apple device and not be sent to any third parties. There is also a HomeKit router, which will help with your other uh, devices in your home, keeping them safe. It's a very interesting thing to see from Apple and I'm excited to see where this HomeKit stuff goes. Messages has a very interesting feature, which is the ability to have like share your name and picture, something we heard about that's very exciting then control who it's shared with, and lots of cool stuff there. Memojis have much more good stuff there with hair, glasses, hat options, and AirPods, if that's really what you want. Memoji stickers that can be used just as a sticker or as actually emojis, which is really strange. But here's my favorite part. Memoji stickers are supported 
on all devices that iOS 13 is. So you can create your stickers the same way you would create a Memoji, and you can use those on any device with iOS 13, which again is the 6S or later. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Now, camera and photos. This one is quite interesting. So we've got better, more lighting options, uh, lots of photo editing stuff that will look very good with that lighting, changing lots of individual things to your photos in a nicer way. And one that is so good to finally have is video editing. That I am so excited to see on iOS because, I mean, I've wanted to rotate videos, change lighting and stuff, and we can finally do that in a video, which is super awesome to see and photos being organized in a Photos app, kind of like Google Photos, which I would love to use, but I will not switch over to their Photos app until it has free backup like Google Photos, which they could totally do, but they have not. AirPods have got some minor updates. Siri can announce messages to you, and then you can just talk and reply with that, and a not-so-minor thing of audio sharing. So multiple people can listen to something on one phone with their AirPods. That's, that's really cool, actually. I'm really excited about that one. And this feature that we can also see here is handoff with your HomePod. So you're listening to audio, you're making a phone call or something on your iPhone. You walk up to your HomePod, tap it near it, and it will transfer over to the HomePod. Really useful for when you're coming home or want to change to something big, which is actually something really awesome that I really love that idea of. Something almost futuristic in a way, which I love. Siri has got some interesting things. Siri can do many radio stations, which is awesome. Live radio and on the HomePod, personal responses. Siri will do personal responses to different people. She'll recognize voices and do that on the HomePod. That is so exciting for me to finally see. And CarPlay has got a dashboard that shows many things at once, calendar, and Siri doesn't take up a whole screen. Something I would love to see on actual iOS. Siri supposedly sounds better because it's software generated voice. They did a demo of it and I really wasn't, didn't see it so great. Now something you may have noticed I didn't talk about is the redesigned volume control. They just didn't talk about it at the keynote, but it is there. I found it hidden on Apple's website under their iOS 13 preview. There is that and some more abilities over there with the iOS control center. Now, what about some other things? The support. So iOS 13 will be supported on iPhone 6S and later, which I'm assuming means the iPod 7 and the iPhone SE, I guess. But I'm not sure on that one yet. We'll have to see what it downloads on with the beta, but those are my guesses. iPad OS. So we didn't talk about anything with the iPad there. That's because they made an entirely new iPad operating system for the iPad. And they showed a really cool video displaying it. So what we see here is the iPad home screen with these special new wallpapers. It's actually really weird to see wallpapers. We don't usually see these right away. And when you slide over to a few of your widgets, you can kind of see on this image that they pop up just on the side like that. Collapses your apps together, that's pretty cool. Just better multitasking with slide over, switching apps easily, and then having two of the same app open, so like two instances of Word, two notes, two documents open. That one's like really cool actually. Now the Files app. Column view for showing file hierarchies, folder sharing with your iCloud drive, built-in file sharing over servers, thumb drive support, and SD card support. That one's really exciting for especially like pro users and things, very useful. And then you can load it straight into an editing app. Now let's look at Safari here. Safari on the iPad will automatically optimize a desktop site for touch and stuff on the iPad. That's pretty useful since the iPad has such a big screen now. There's a download manager and there are keyboard shortcuts for it. Both useful things that are very important for such a device like this. Custom fonts are available on the app stores for iOS and iPadOS. I again found that one hidden away on the website, a website somewhere here with on iOS. You can download fonts and manage them on the, I, on the store, which is very interesting and very fun to see actually. 
Now there's lots of gestures, so you can move the cursor with your finger, drag the cursor to select, three finger pinch to copy, twice to cut, three fingers spread to paste, three fingers swipe to undo or redo, getting closer to that computer idea with that iPad. Apple Pencil. We're getting 9 millisecond latency and a new markup interface. Things we both heard about earlier that look very good. You can do things like drag up from the side to bring up markup, lots of cool things like that. There's a new compact iPhone style typing layout for when you're typing with one finger, and this will support iPad Air 2 and later, all iPad Pros, iPad 5th Gen and later, and the iPad Mini 4. Mac Pro. This is something very exciting we've been hearing about for years, and I am so excited to finally see it. While I definitely cannot afford one, it looks really cool. So it's got great configurability with inside. It's got this metal container that can be opened up to change the things on the inside. So let's talk about the top specs. 28 core Intel Xeon processor that appears to be probably Apple specific. 12 DIMM slots for up to 1.5 terabytes of storage. PCIe expansion on the Mac, which is great for pro users again. Four Thunderbolt ports, two USB-A ports. And your graphics options you can get a Radeon Pro 580X, one Radeon Pro Vega 2, two Radeon Pro Vegas 2, or two modules with two Radeon Pro Vegas. So that is four Radeon Pro Vega 2s running on a system. It's incredibly powerful, but not just that. They have a new card called Afterburner, which is essentially a graphics card focusing on video editing basically gives you faster experience on your Mac, and it's really quite cool. Apple has a new Pro display. It's got HDR, Retina 6K, anti-reflective coating. It's got this great backlight that has like a lot of cool stuff in it to make it look really good. Uh, back of it acts as a heat sink because of the, the back, like the air in it and stuff. Wow, it looks really nice. It's got what they call Extreme HDR. It's called the Pro Display XDR for Extreme HDR. Uh, you can hook up to six of these displays to a Mac Pro, which shows that thing's incredible power. The monitor itself can rotate into a beautiful portrait mode, which is great for like editing photos and stuff like that. Very useful to have it easily rotate like that with the stand. And the display is also removable from that stand with this, like, mesh metal background thing for the cooling. And it's $5,000. The display costs almost as much as that Mac Pro. It's incredibly expensive, but you can use your Mac Pro with a, another display. That's, this is just a very high-level, again, pro-level display very powerful display for a very powerful Mac. That's just what you're getting here when you're getting this Mac Pro. Now, Mac OS. We have Mac OS Catalina. It's supported with Macs from mid-2012 or later. It's an, actually a very small update, but let's talk about what it's got. It splits iTunes into three programs, Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, and Apple TV. You can still sync with your phone in the Mac settings, and I'm not sure how this will affect Windows. I'm guessing, though, iTunes will just stay the same on Windows because it's not like Apple cares very much about Windows. A new feature called Sidecar, which is incredible. I'm so happy they actually did this feature. It lets you use your iPad as a second display for your Mac. That is so incredible to see. So useful in so many ways. So some accessibility features we're seeing is control your Mac and iOS with your voice. This was so incredible. It's like they redesigned iOS and Mac OS to be controlled by a voice if you can't use your hands or something. It's so... The amount of effort they put into this, you can talk to like select numbers and things to make different UI things. You can totally use your entire device with your voice. Mouse support was not found, though. We did not get that. So hopefully another time we'll get mouse support for the iPad. The Find My App. This one is really quite cool. So Find My iPhone and Find My Friends combined together. We knew that would happen. 
Then we also heard a leak that said you would be able to locate Apple devices that are offline. That just seems strange to me, but I guess possible. Now, I made a guess in an earlier video that it would work by sending signals to other Apple devices, which would then communicate back to yours. That's actually how it works. So your device sends a low power Bluetooth signal out, and if any Apple device is nearby, it will retrieve that, and if it can, send it to another device or send it up to the network, where it will then come back to your device, and you can actually track your device or send it to activation lock, even if it's asleep or not on any network. It's amazing. Like, the power that's there with that for, I believe it works on iPhones and any device. And that is so awesome to have. You can actually track your iPod now if that works with it. Or, well, only the iPod 7 because that's the only one supported. But that's incredible. There's also screen time and AR capabilities. These AR capabilities they talk about are actually, like, entire capabilities that relate... These relate, like, as developing as a whole. So Reality Kit and Reality Composer, they just make it easier to drag and drop for developers to design a 3D environment. Also has to do with AR Kit 3, which allows you to place objects in an area with people and track and record their motion. Now Mojang showed this up incredibly with their Minecraft Earth game. This was already, details were already announced about this, but this was the first demonstration of it, and it's amazing. It's like AR Minecraft entirely. You can move around in the world, see things, interact with things. Other people in the world show up and you can interact with them. It looks really cool. So this is coming to iOS exclusively this summer and it's awesome to see that. Now I'm guessing we're getting very close to Apple releasing AR glasses at this point because of this. Now those are all the things that I have so far for WWDC. But more things will probably be revealed as people look through the betas, find more things on Apple's website, a lot of interesting stuff. I will keep you updated with possibly another video today or tomorrow, and videos about their developer conference all through the week. Also, developer betas are available for release today, so if you have a developer account, you can get on those betas today. Software will be released for public betas in July, and in September on, I believe, the 10th, uh, or the 12th, one of those days, iOS will most likely be released, and along with macOS, watchOS, tvOS, all of those things. Those are really cool to see. I'm Ask Howard. Thanks for watching. Bye.